All right, so as I mentioned just before I had you guys do this on your, well, first let me ask you guys, number four, is it a function or not a function? Okay, so tell me why I, I hear some people saying it's a function, some people saying it's not a function. Who says it's not? How, what, what made you think that it wasn't a function? In the X, so let's let's identify a couple things. So these are the, the this is the X right here, right, and this is the Y value. Okay. Now, um, and let's look at this one here. So when I when I say seven maps to three. So that means on the graph, 7, 3, this is a new thing. I don't know how I feel about this. Uh, that's my x, comma y. Eight maps to what, guys? Eight maps to one. Wow, that's okay. Let's just, let's write this out first. My, um... Uh, a student said that nine also maps to one. Okay. Uh, and then 10 maps to what? 10 maps to two. So these are all points on the graph. Now, remember that this is X. Man, this is bonkers. Remember that X maps to Y. Are any X's repeating? No. So because there are no repeating X's, So because it's no repeating x's, that means that it is a function, right? Okay. So now let's look at the other one. Um, what's the first point? Three maps to what? Zero. And then the next point is three comma two. And the next point is three comma four. And then the next one is three comma six. Now, is there a repeating X? Yeah, so three equals x and then it repeats right we have more than one three this little circle thing is throwing me off this is, must be a new feature yeah i'll wait until after we finish the video to see and i need to calibrate so i switched tablets so i could calibrate the tablet i just need to take time and calibrate the tablet um so anyways this is not a function because the threes uh, because the X's repeat mm. but it's still a mathematical relationship um this is actually I if I were to guess and I don't know but based on the information given I believe this is the equation X equals 3 you can graph that so that would be a vertical line at X equals 3 so um, yeah, it's not a function because the x's repeat. It's still an equation, but it's not a function. Are there any questions on that? What is it that you're confused about? Like everything? Well, let me, let me explain it to you guys one more time. Yeah, so, so what we're going to, I got to fast forward a little bit. Most of the work that we're going to do in this section are functions. The title of the section are functions. Functions are very unique equations. For every input, there is one unique output. 
What that means is when I plug in a 7 on this first one, when I plug in a 7, 7 is only going to map to one uh, Y value. 8 is my input. So let's write that down too. So for every, and maybe that might help, these, the way that it's set up or structured, as the X values are considered inputs and the Y values are considered outputs. So for each unique input, or for each input value, I'm going to have one unique output. Um, also, when we map it like this, there should only be one arrow from the X. So one arrow per X. Per X value. I'm saying the words. Yeah, but why... I'm saying the word. Why would you think it's a C? It's a parenthesis. Yeah. So one arrow per, and I should probably see you, you distracted me, per X value. So when you look at the mapping, there's only one arrow leaving seven. Okay. When you look at eight, there's only one arrow leaving eight. When you look at nine, there's only one arrow leaving nine. Only one arrow leaving 10. So that is a function. For each input, there is one unique output. But on number five, when I have three, I have four arrows leaving three. That's not a function. Because when I plug three into the function, I can get zero. When I plug three, well, I shouldn't even say function. When I plug three into the equation, I can get zero. When I plug 3 into the equation, I can get 2. When I plug 3 into the equation, I can get 4. When I plug 3 into the equation, I can get 6. So there are more than one arrow leaving the x value. So anytime you have more, and I'm not going to use parentheses anymore, more then, oh, that's a terrible T. I'm not happy with the tablet lately. You said that last week. I know, and I brought up my own tablet from home, but there's I, there's something wrong with this computer. Or you did or I did more. No, Here. more than Everybody? one arrow. <laughs> Write this down, please. I don't see everybody. Oh, you guys are mesmerized by my teaching, but I need to see pencils writing on the paper. Yeah. Uh, more than one arrow per X value. So, um, three has four arrows. Now, I'm saying arrow because that's what you're going to call it, but it really it's a mapping. It's a mapping from the input value to the output value, okay? Does that help? So there's an equation. There will be other equations. We're going to do, do lots of equations. But right now, we're only going to work on a, a certain family of equations that we call functions. And so we need to know what the functions are. Because later on, you're going to do inverse functions. And you can only do an inverse function of a function. So in the real world, when they go to do science or a business model or any type of math model in the real world, they have to identify if it's a function or not. Because then they can do an inverse function. And the inverse function helps them work backwards. If I had a business and I make coats, and I sell the coats, I can track how many coats I sell and when I sell them. And I can make an equation. And from that equation, I can make an inverse equation. And I need to know how, how good the inverse equation will work. Because I might want to know back, I might want to work backwards to figure out how much material I need to order or how many employees I need to hire based on the number of coats. And I need to be able to to 
determine all these things. And so when I go to do that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the data and go, is this a function? Does it look like a function? Because if it does, then I could do an inverse function. Consequently, if it doesn't look like a function, we break it up into separate functions. And then we operate with those inverse functions separately. So, but the first thing is you got to be able to identify the functions. Okay.